Hi, my name is Dr. Sherry Driscoll. I'm a pediatric physical medicine and rehabilitation physician at Mayo Clinic Children's Center. Babies often develop head shape asymmetry. And what I mean by that is that I, I see kids with head shapes who are a little bit lopsided. They may develop a little bit of flatness on one side of the back of their head, or they may be flat all the way across the back of their head. Um, the asymmetric head shape abnormality is called positional plagiocephaly. The flatness across the entire back of the head is called brachycephaly. Both of these things are very common these days because we're putting babies to sleep on their backs. As babies spend a lot of time on their backs, it's simply a gravitational or gravity phenomena that they uh, put more pressure on the very soft bones of their head. And if they spend a long time in a certain position, they'll simply become flat in that certain position. Some babies become flat on one side of their head because they have a preference to turn their head. And maybe that was due to their position in utero, or maybe it's due to what they like to look at outside of their crib. But that prolonged position can cause flatness um, in that one region. And then once they develop that area of flatness, it's actually harder and harder for them to turn over and start to look the other way because they develop a little ridge on the back of their head and it makes it more difficult for them to then turn in the other direction. Well, that uh, flatness or asymmetric flatness, the, pl the plagiocephaly, can actually be treated and to some degree prevented. And I think we're doing a much better job these days of teaching young families about repositioning their babies as often as possible. Now, it's still absolutely true that you should put your baby to sleep on their back. There's no doubt about that. There, um, there should be no pillows in the bed, um, nothing else that could cause any concern for um, breathing in that baby. But when the baby's awake, um, having the baby spend some time on their tummy, so their supervised, supervised tummy time, and then uh, spending time in uh, other ways so that they're not putting pressure on the back of their head is fabulous. So that might mean um, holding your baby up across your shoulder. It might mean a football hold, so baby's lying on tummy um, in your arms. It might mean uh, just positioning the baby on your chest so that you're face to face or on your lap so that she's on, your t on, your, on her tummy. All these things are ways to get uh, the baby off of the back of the head and help to prevent those head shape abnormalities. Now, if head shape abnormality becomes severe enough that it's quite bothersome to the parents and a concern for uh, the pediatrician or the other primary care provider, there are other strategies that can be taken. Uh, for example, if a baby has torticollis, which means their head turning um, is such that it's because of a muscle pull and they actually become stuck in one position, that needs to be treated by physical therapy. The torticollis needs to be treated before the head shape can be treated. Secondly, if repositioning alone isn't sufficient to help with the baby's head shape asymmetry, a helmet can be used. Uh, I brought an example of one. This is called a cranial orthosis. It's custom made for the baby. It can be used to uh, place on the baby's head. So it's a nice round surface. So now a baby can move her head freely side to side and not spend so much time on the one single position. It also allows for what we call guided growth. And so as baby's head shape is growing, we allow for space inside the helmet where the baby's head is flattest so that as her head grows, um, it actually fills out and becomes more rounded. All of these reasons are uh, uh, things that you should consider when um, you're contemplating whether or not to bring your baby in for evaluation. If you have any concern about your baby's head shape, just take her into uh, your pediatrician or family practitioner or other primary care advisor and they can decide with you if further evaluation needs to be done.